but yeah, it's, I mean, a, a coastal home, while it's the most amazing escape from, from the valley, um, it, it definitely comes with a little bit more responsibilities and things to look at. When you own a home at the Oregon coast, there's certain things that you need to look out for when it comes to maintenance. Well, in this video, we're gonna talk about that and all that starts now. Hey, what's up everybody? This is Paul Clem with the Home Team Brokers coming to you from the Oregon coast. And if this is your first time to the channel living on the Oregon coast and you wanna get more videos like this, make sure to hit the subscribe button or tap the little bell to get notified every time we drop a new video. We've helped so many people relocate to the Oregon coast by second homes and vacation homes. And as real estate professionals, we'd love to help with that process. So if that's you, give us a call, send us a text, shoot us an email, or click the link down below in the description of the video and schedule a Zoom call with us. Either way, we would love to help with your move to the Oregon coast. All right, my conversation with an Oregon coast home inspector starts in three, two, one. The intent here is to hopefully educate people a little bit better, again, you know, from the perspective of a professional uh, who can probably speak to some of these things a little more elegantly, you know, than, yes. than I could. So, um, yeah. Do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah. I was going to say, so my name is Kevin Dykes. I'm a inspector owner of Alpha Home Inspections. Uh, I've been a home inspector for about five years now, but I've been in the construction trades, all different facets of it for over 20 years. So have a wealth of knowledge in in many many different uh different parts of the trades and whatnot in construction um and then on top of all that too with today's topic is i'm actually a coastal home owner so i actually have firsthand experience yeah on a lot of this that we're talking about and actually practice it too so um it's it's one thing to to be able to read about these things and it's a whole nother animal when you get to do deal with it on a regular basis so Absolutely. Well, sounds like you're the perfect resource, um, you know, to get some clarity around some of these things in particular, as far as what, you know, what somebody is, you know, should be considering as far as from the investment standpoint up front, you know, what are they really kind of getting themselves into, uh, which mm -hmm. from my experience, hasn't really been an enormous deterrent for people. I think a lot of people understand that because of certain conditions at the coast near the ocean, there's going to be you know, some level of kind of added routine maintenance, regular maintenance that people need to be doing. I, I think a lot of people have some understanding of that to some degree, but like I was just telling you, a lot of people ask us just about this and that. And uh, so I think this will be really helpful for me too, you know, as far as being able to provide as clear of answer as possible. Everything's kind of case by sure. case, I'm sure, as far as where the house sits and uh, all of those things, and we'll get into that. So I guess first and foremost, and I think like we've kind of alluded to already, you know, at the coast, homes at the coast have, you know, certain conditions that would lend to issues, potential issues that could be, you know, caused, um, you know, for, for homes. So what, what are those conditions specifically? I guess we can start there. Yeah. Start with that. So you got to you got to figure, especially for the Oregon coast in particular that we're kind of focusing on here, is what we have is we have the salt air, which is usually the biggest culprit uh, to to issues and such. But you have high humidity, and it's it's pretty much a constant. Even in the summertime, uh, it it doesn't matter. We have just all sorts of moisture in the air, whether it be early mornings on a dry day, you you still have it. Um, and then from there, all of our weather patterns that we see here in the Pacific Northwest, they're all exacerbated out at the coast. So if we get some winds here inland, they're going to be exponentially worse out at the coast. So while a normal home sees, you know, winds, maybe 30 mile an hour winds or such like that during the year, that coastal house is going to see 60, 
maybe even 70 mile plus an hour winds, depending on the location wow. as well. Yeah. Um, and then again, location dependent on the home out at the coast. Sand has a big factor in, in it as well, because sand, sand driven, you know, with the wind being just blowing, it can be essentially doing a sandblasting to your to your exterior of the home. And sand naturally too with with the air, it will make its way into the house, into your filters, I mean, all sorts of stuff. So so the big things we really look at though is it's the salt air, the the moisture, humidity content, and then just that really severe weather that we don't normally get on a regular basis for a home. Um, I do, it, as I kind of keep talking here, you'll you'll hear me reference the location of the house. Um, the location could be a big factor on some of the things that we're referring to, whether mm -hmm. it be an actual ocean front, whether it be only within a few blocks of the, the coast, or it could be something that's further inland, maybe a couple miles or so. Uh, they're still all coastal homes. But in Oregon in particular, we have our coastal range, mountain range. Mm -hmm. So realistically, anything west of that coastal mountain range, you are you should consider yourself a coastal home because you're going to still have all of that, that moisture, that excessive salt air mm -hmm. and such with it. So, so yes, yeah, so whether you're 10 miles inland up in a valley or you're still, you know, half a mile in, you're still a coastal home. So okay. you need to keep your keep thinking about that sort of sort of thing in the back of the head. Yeah, that that's good to know. And that's something that we get asked about a lot because again, I think these things are known to some, you know, varying degree um as far as kind of that there's these issues whether it's more severe weather, salty air, like you said even even sand getting blown at a house, but a lot of people do ask us, okay, you know, is there a difference between a house that is right on the beach or even a couple blocks mm -hmm. from the beach versus maybe up over on the east side of the highway or behind a good amount of trees or has some protection from like a hill or some elevation where it's not getting the wind as bad. Yeah. Uh, but it sounds like, you know, there's still a lot of moisture in the air, you know, the the biggest the biggest issue that we have with homes, whether it be in the valley, up at the mountain, or at the coast, is it's rain, it's water, and humidity. That's that's our the biggest culprit of issues that we see within home defects. Mm -hmm. And so it doesn't matter if you're, you know, being blasted right at the coastline or again inland to some degree. That's okay. going to be there. It's going to be present. And so that's. That's where we really want people to understand when you're purchasing at the the coast in particular is that that salt air and that salt rain, if you will, as well, is it's going to be present, which means and kind of the big factors, again, which lead to the the wear and tear on our wood products, as well as any of our metal products on the exteriors of our home in particular. Yeah. And that's that's kind of what I wanted to go into next is what are the, what are the things that you see most affected, um, on the house? I mean, you said wood metals, um, yep. what else maybe beyond that or what specifically are things that you're seeing yeah. need to be repaired or replaced more often? So, so as technology has, as advanced our, our products and everything in construction has come along with it as well. So we, up until realistically 10, 15 years ago, we didn't see much of any type of engineered woods or composite woods, things of that sort. So decks and whatnot that we see now, Trex decking mm -hmm. or other variants of that, um, those weren't in the picture. And so a lot of the homes out there are still utilizing your your traditional wood products, if you will. So we, we really want to keep a focus on what type of wood products are being utilized and where. Um, if you're referring to a deck, you want to make sure that the deck is being, it has pressure treated woods in the very least mm -hmm. on it. Or if the decking surface is a cedar product, then from there, you want to make sure that they're sealed on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. um, those, those are things that oftentimes, again, as homeowners, we get very busy with other things. And so we're not doing it on a regular basis, which even more so is the case at the coast. Um, so again, so wood products, 
metal products. We don't realize how many metal products are on the exterior of a house. Sure. Um, all of our light fixtures generally are some sort of a metal product. All of the fasteners on the home are metal products. Um, flashing on the house. And you can kind of go down the list, different hardware and so forth, mm -hmm. railings. And so a lot of those products in the past, people didn't either spend the money on stainless materials um, and they would use galvanized or other other maybe what we consider subpar products for a coastal area. Mm -hmm. um, and so you start looking at that stuff a little more closely of what was utilized or what wasn't. And that's that's not just a, okay, we're looking at the house and how it is right now, but you really need to keep that in mind in the future. Any type of remodel work that you do, you want to, if we're going to be using metal um, anywhere, we want to use stainless steel. Okay. Um, it's not impervious to salt as far as rust and such, but it is the pretty much the best product that we have. Um, and it gives us kind of the, the best chance, at least in longevity. Um, beyond, beyond the wood, beyond the metals, which are really the big, the big ones, as far as what's getting affected, um, our roofing materials, depending on what they are, they can see a lot more wear and tear largely because of the severe weather. And then from there, you can look at other things too, as windows, if it's a vinyl window, if it's a, a wood clad metal, whatever it might be. Um, but, but again, and the, the biggest two factors I would say is the wood products as well as the, the metal based products. Those are the ones that are most affected. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It makes sense. And that's more or less been my understanding as well. Um, I mean, you mentioned roofs too, and obviously, you know, that's, that's a big, you know, piece of the overall picture, um, as far mm -hmm. as the cost of replacing, um, or even repairing, you know, if there, if there is damage, you know, that comes quicker in this type of climate, um, so what are some of the things people can be doing as far as, you know, preventative maintenance and how often? Yeah. So if we're, we'll go ahead and we'll talk about wood products. Okay. And we'll start there at least. So again, so wood products, we can find those on the deck is the most common place, but we'll see that as wood trim on a home. It might be the siding might be an actual wood based product, but the, the underlying thing is regardless of what type of wood product it is, it needs to be sealed. We don't know if we're going to seal that with a stain or a polyurethane, a, a varnish, a latex paint. Mm -hmm. it, it's it all kind of dependent upon what that material is and what the use of that material is. But regardless, the, the underlying thing is we need to keep up on that. Now on a regular home, an exterior paint might last, a latex-based exterior paint might last 10 to 15 years or so before it really starts breaking down. And is that uh, coastal? Is, yeah, I was going to go say, ahead. is that in general or is that at the that's, coast specifically? Yeah, that's a generalization on an interior in, interior uh, home as far as, you know, somewhere away inland. from the coastline. Yeah, yes. got it. Okay. Coastal homes, that latex, same la latex paint, we might only see five to 10 years. So it's a significant change. Now, there's things we can do to make that latex paint last a lot longer in those conditions. One of the biggest things you can do on a coastal home, and it's not necessarily for just latex paint uh, exteriors, is pressure washing. And this isn't the type of necessarily the pressure washing where you see someone, a neighbor out in the driveway, just blasting their concrete super close. Yeah. We're looking more as we're trying to wash away all of that salt sticky film that has accumulated on the exterior because if that all breaks down that latex paint, you're going to see paint chipping, bubbling, all those kinds of factors then. So, so pressure washing is one of the best things you can do on the coast. Mm -hmm. How often? Well, that's, that becomes a little more dependent on location. If you're a, if you're a coastal like beachfront home, mm -hmm. it, it's, it's not the craziest thing to say, you know what, we should probably at least the West facing, we should at least pressure wash that twice a year. It is that, I mean, that's, you're becoming a great homeowner if you can do it that at that point. But that seems you know, reasonable. 
it's it's not something that again like i said it's not a massive undertaking you're really just trying to wash the exterior of just that the grime Mm -hmm. so so pressure washing big a big thumbs up stay on top of it that's going to give you longevity from there it's it's looking at do we have paint that's chipping away do we have paint that's bubbling do we have stains and whatnot too that are doing the same and so if we start seeing that it's the proactiveness we we really want to jump on that as fast as we can so you might only have to do a little prime priming resealing of an area versus having to go through and do a recoat mm-hmm. on a large area so the and again you'll kind of hear me repeat but ongoing monitoring of the home is the best thing you can do at a coastal home. You can catch those things right away because we're inland in the valley on a home. We might, we might get two and three times the opportunity longevity wise for an issue to really kind of come to head. Mm -hmm. We're going to see that take place in a very short span out on the coast. Mm -hmm. If something starts to rust, it's going to rust and it's going to grab hold and and exacerbate very quickly so that that ongoing monitoring of just constantly looking and seeing and then jumping on it as fast as you can is going to save you so much money and headache in the long run um moving away from the the wood the metal side Mm -hmm. basic principles again of monitoring be watching out to see for that rust or corrosion start to take place Um, even again, like I said, even stainless products are still going to start having it, but there's things we can do when we see those things early on. If you see rust, you can get some of the rust inhibitors or rust converters, which will convert that rust and seal it. It might not necessarily be the prettiest thing in the world, but it stops it. It gives us a little bit more longer lifespan with the, the different fixtures, whatever it might be. Um, but picking picking the proper materials out in the long term after you've already purchased your house, um, even looking at alternative materials, uh, they make specific light fixtures for coastal homes that are actually made out of fiberglass that look, they might look like metal. They might look like wood. Interesting. It'll cost a little bit more. Yeah, it'll cost a little bit more money, but you're going to get exponential life out of that comparatively. Yeah, in the long run. So, right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so you, you want to start thinking about those things of, you know, yes, this is my coastal house. And so I'm going to have to spend a little bit more money when I go to do a project, but you spend that little bit more money, you're going to save so much in that long term. Yeah. Cause otherwise you're replacing things that, uh, <laughs> on, on a regular basis. Yeah. On a higher frequency. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, one, one thing too, is you really have to figure out what the home's purpose is going to be. If this is going to be a full-time residence, is this going to be a second home that the family is going to try to get down to once a month, a couple times a month, maybe only a few times a year, mm-hmm. or if it's, if it's going to become a rental property? Because all of those make a very big difference on not necessarily the wear and tear of the house, but if that home's going to be sitting unoccupied and not having someone watching things take mm-hmm. place for a long period you can go a couple months of a house sitting out there by itself and very large issues take place. Mm-hmm. So that that's kind of like a whole another topic to get into as far as what you want to do with that and what are some good options for you. Sure. Um, whether it be property management companies, et cetera. Right. right. Yeah. That, that'll, that all makes sense. I have heard to going back to the metal piece, that some of the the heating system or cooling system or HVAC can also become affected. I think you mentioned sand getting in the filters, but also yes. the air getting through being, you know, being salty air. Does that, I mean, yes. Does, so do, do the, yeah, go ahead. The, the, the kind of the positive of things is, you know, we don't see nearly as many AC units out at the coastal range. Sure. Um, we, we have such a temperate, temperate climate out there that it's it's fairly uncommon now something that's becoming much more common is the ductless units mm-hmm. and so they'll have they'll have something at least on the exterior mm-hmm. and so 
what we're really watching for in particular, as far as the wear and tear on all these units is the AC condenser coils. That right. that salty, salty moisture with the sand, it can actually pass through those, collect on it, and it can rust those things out so quickly or mm -hmm. corrode them. Um, so there's, as a homeowner, again, it goes to that kind of that washing and cleaning thing on a little more regular basis. Mm -hmm. They have products where you can simply just spray it, spray it through all those coils and wash the grime off. They have as well actual products that you can spray into the coils as a essentially a sealant or protectant now. They've made them specifically for salt, uh, salt conditions. Um, so that's something that a homeowner can do versus having to have a, you know, a specialty contractor come out and, and do that. But again, either way, it's a, yep, we want to give a little more love and attention to that exterior of the house um, and those, the, con the condition of the AC unit. Um, we don't, we don't see it as common as we'd like to, as far as annual uh, annual checkups, routine maintenance on these things mm -hmm. uh, when we're in the valley. I I strongly suggest that as a much more commonplace thing that needs to be done when you're at the coast. Totally. The, another thing too to think about is if you decide to to add that in after the fact is the location of the unit. If you have a possibility to put that on the east side of the home, somewhere where it's more protected from that weather, you're going to see so much more life out of that that unit versus if it's stuck on the west side mm -hmm. of the house. Um it's it's a, you know, it's kind of easily overlooked, but it can save you I mean thousands of dollars in the long run. Yeah. So. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Well, that's all really helpful information and it sounds like, okay, yes, we know that there are, you know, bigger issues to look out for, you know, and, and issues to look out for more often, but there are things that people can do to, to mitigate some of these issues. It sounds like there's also a lot of things that people can do kind of in the interim to extend the life that be just kind of a, uh, not not necessarily a band-aid but like you mentioned you know touching up paint you know to seal the wood on the siding for example without having to necessarily replace the siding or repaint the entire house right. or some of the work with the coils um on some of those you know um uh, uh heating and cooling units so uh but beyond that though i mean it it sounds like if if people aren't taking these steps power washing in particular um, that they're probably looking at having to rep repair and replace some of these things more often. So um, you mentioned on the power washing a couple of times a year, and you mentioned, I think, too, just getting or keeping an eye on everything. Would you recommend a specific interval for that? I mean, is that something like on a monthly basis, somebody should be doing a little light inspection of their house or quarterly? So it... And so it, it kind of, it depends largely on what the home's purpose is. And I, I kind of fall back on that again, because if yeah. you're, if you're a full-time resident, you're going to notice things much more off. You're just going to be there and see things. If it's a rental unit, hopefully you or whoever's doing the property management for it, they're doing either at least a quarterly inspection on things. They're watching it. If it's a just a second home for you, this is where I strongly recommend you getting someone out there, if it's not going to be you on a regular basis, to look over everything. Um, but to answer your question, realistically, spend spend 30 minutes every quarter and walk around the house and look at everything in detail. That's that is the best thing that you can possibly do for your house. You, I mean, make note if you see paint chipping or bubbling or cracking, whatever it is. And Maybe that trip that you're walking around, you might not necessarily have the time to go ahead and do it, but you can write everything down, plan accordingly and get back out there or have a contractor if need be come out sure. with it. So a, a quarterly inspection, just generalized inspection on things, that's going to keep keep you in a constant no of the condition on the exterior of your house. The the pressure washing, like I said, if you can, if, if you are a beachfront home doing that twice twice a year is great 
Um, but if you can, if you can look at doing it once a year is doing just a generalized washing on the exterior of the house, you're, you're still going to be putting yourself in, in good shape for things. Sure. Um, beyond, beyond all that, you just have to literally look at the things that we see here in the Valley on a regular basis of change our filters every, you know, twice a year or however you normally do it, double that. So it, mm. it, make it, make it a point to be going through and cleaning your HVAC filters at least every few months, because again, it's all that salty grime on things. You want to do that. We don't have to think about that here in the Valley so much as far as that salty air, um, but at the coast, even on the interior of the home, that salty film, it gets everywhere. That's mm. what we live with. And so going through the home, even on the interior and wiping surfaces down, that's that's a big factor of things because our wood products, our tables and such, you want to keep those clean from all that that kind of stickiness. Um, so interesting pledge, whatever. Yeah, whatever pledge, you know, whatever it might be, it's yeah. going to extend life. Same thing as our appliances in the home. Even if you have a stainless steel fridge or whatever it might be, it's still going to eventually collect all of that, mm -hmm. that from the air. So you want to go through and do a proper cleaning on the house a little more often. Yeah, It's just yeah. not something you would think about. And I don't want to scare people to think, oh, gosh, a coastal home, everything's going to be sticky and gross. It's not something you wouldn't notice by any means, um, but it's there. Yeah. And so that's what you you just have to assume. If you haven't cleaned it recently, that salty fill mixture is there. It's there. And that's that's on pretty much all surfaces. So so yeah, not just think about just the exterior, but think about the interior and different products as, as well. Um, Nowhere is safe. <laughs> one thing, yeah, exactly. <laughs> one thing we didn't talk about uh at all, I, I forgot to mention, but rodents and pests. Sure. Um, that that is a big factor out at the coast. It, we have it everywhere in Oregon. It's it's just kind of the nature of us living with nature and kind of being one with them. Right. But at the coast in particular, because we have kind of that harsher conditions and everything of that sort, and a lot of these homes are built into natural habitats, you're going to see a lot more issues with pests. Um, the biggest thing you can do on your, again, your quarterly walk around of your home is making sure all of your foundation vents all the screens are intact and in place. And that's even a itty bitty little corner uh, might be bent. That's all it takes for a, a mouse to get inside. Yeah. So you want to make sure all of all of our hole, holes in the exterior are sealed up. That's going to put you in the best spot for at least rodents getting in your crawl space. And quite honestly, you're probably still going to get a couple of them in there. Um, so yeah. if you're not a full-time homeowner, consider pest control. Of, of some degree, you know, if they're coming out there a few times a year, just to either check bait boxes or something, whatever it might be. Sure. Um, because, because rodents out of the coast, they're going to go for the nice comfy, warm spots and look for any type of material they can chew. And generally yeah. your house offers a lot of options. Yeah, absolutely. Um, How about wood? And like any see termites. Oh yeah, go ahead. That's exactly yep. what I was going to ask. Yeah. yeah I was like, wood say, destroying wood. wood yep. Just, yep. So naturally wood destroying insects they love warm they love moist products and where do we see that the most again at the coast mm -hmm. so it whether you are just wanting to be a very visually active homeowner watching for those kinds of things if you start seeing carpenter ants flying around inside the home you're already too late you, you need at that point, that means that they're, they're somewhere they've you gotten need in. to call pest control at that point right away. Yeah. They've gotten in somewhere. Um, they're with you. Even if you're looking on the exterior of the house too, and you kind of see them flying around, or if they're isolated in one particular spot, um, you, if they're on the exterior still, you might as a homeowner be able to get some of the home defense products and whatever it might be and treat it yourself. Mm -hmm. And again, just kind of continue to monitor, but Yes, the underlying condition of things is we see more issues with termites and whatnot, carpenter ants out at the coast. Hmm. That's again, it's not a huge, it's not a huge deterrent away from a coastal home. It's just something we need to be a little more attentive to. Yeah. Um, with everything. So 
pest control, a lot of people don't, they, they shy away from it here in the Valley because for the most part, we don't have major issues with that in Oregon. Yes, we do have pests and rodents and crawl spaces and such, but for the most part, it's not too bad. I would strongly suggest it to anyone considering a coastal home to either be very proactive themselves about the pest management or to look at pest services for that. Yeah. At, at least just have it on the radar. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Cool. Well, Kevin, this has all been very helpful. Um, I think uh, we covered a lot here and I appreciate you being so thorough on everything. Definitely helps me out a lot. And hopefully this will help yeah. uh, some other folks who are considering a home at the Oregon coast. Um, people can find you at uh, it's alpha alpha inspections, pdx.com. Is that the best website for you? That's correct. Yeah. That's that's the website to go for you if you want to email with any questions you might ever have alpha home inspections PDX um, at Gmail. Uh, you can shoot me a text. You can give me a call. Uh, all of my contact information is either on the website as well. Yeah, um, for that sort of thing. But yeah, I'm always always more than happy to go ahead and answer any any questions that might might pop up in a, in your head from time to time. Or if, if I can't get you an answer for any reason, I'd be happy to go ahead and, and try to look for one from someone um, cool. like that. So, but I mean, again, from a, from a second home owner out at the coast, I can tell you that owning a coastal home is, is got to be one of the most amazing things that you can have here in Oregon, because being able to retreat out there, it, I mean, your blood pressure, you know, just lowers immediately <laughs> as soon as you hit that coastal air. Um, and everything that you get to experience out there outweighs all of the additional, maybe headaches that you would have as a homeowner, a tenfold. It, Good point. It really is, it's an amazing experience to be out there. Um, so yeah, you, you get a little bit more, a little bit more hassle with things, but what you're getting out of it is just, it's a, a mind blowing experience. It was one of our best, best decisions that we've made. And it's just amazing memories every time we go out there. So yes, don't, don't be afraid about an Oregon coast home. Just be a great proactive home. Owner. Yeah. And that's, you know, that's really, I think why having these discussions and making sure people are informed um, is so important uh, because I think the benefits are, you know, are, are there. And, and I think, you know, people are obviously attracted to the Oregon coast because of the beauty and it is so relaxing and, you know, all of the benefits that you can get, but there's trade-offs with everything, right? Absolutely. Cool. Kevin, uh, well, good to chat with you. And again, really appreciate your time. All right, everybody. I hope that was helpful. Thanks for checking out the video. If you want to get more videos like this, make sure to hit the subscribe button and tap a little bell to get notified every time we drop a new video. And if you are thinking about buying a home at the Oregon coast, relocating to the area, give us a call, send us a text, shoot us an email, or click the link down below in the description of the video and schedule a Zoom call with us. We really appreciate you watching. Until next time, we'll talk to you later.